Dennis, I have a surprise piece of news, not in the document, but very similar and tangentially related to this. And it's from Starlink. So, Ooh, okay. Yeah, uh, just a couple of notes here. I was watching uh, Talos of Tech do a video on this. There are some updates. We got a new dish from Starlink. It is now a square face is what it looks like. Kind of looks like a smaller antenna up there. And this is hopefully cheaper for Starlink to manufacture and provide better reception. Uh, a couple of design refinements in the dish. Uh, it looks like there's no longer an intermediary sort of box that you have to plug everything into. Uh, it looks like it's a little bit more streamlined. You can actually unplug the cable that plugs into the back of the dish before you couldn't. Um, so subtle improvements there. It's officially out of beta. It no longer says it's a beta service. And they have added a speed expectation between 100 megabits per second and 200 megabits per second with the latency as low as 20 milliseconds in most locations. And apparently people have re been reporting over 200 megabits per second. Uh, Starlink is doing one of the rare things where they are under promising and over delivering, which is 100% what they should be doing. Um, and people have even seen, I think I've seen speeds up to 300 megabits per second. So, you know, it's not the best internet option. I don't want to hype this up too much, but if you're interested in Starlink, they have been making improvements to their network and their system. Yeah, so this is good. I'm glad they're getting out of beta. Um, and I've I went on record before and I've actually gotten into some heated debates about this. People people have these unrealistic expectations for what Starlink is. Yeah. Um, Starlink is a great product. I'm glad that it exists. It serves a specific purpose, and it's going to have enterprise purposes as well down the road. But for the love of God, for my rural American friends, I really hope this doesn't end up being their only option because there is two key areas where this is not great. One is pricing. It's very expensive. It's expensive. Two is simply a speed thing, right? Like, there's only so many customers you can have in a geographic region before you're like at capacity, right? It doesn't matter how many cell sites end up being in a place because at any given time, you're going to end up in a situation where one cell site is covering one particular location in orbit, right? There's only so much bandwidth. There's only so much spectrum. We talk about this in the wireless space and the same thing happens with satellite, right? I would Absolutely. really, I really, really hope for the love of God that we see from this infrastructure bill wireless providers expand further out into rural America, offer that beautiful N41 with proper backhaul. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, optimistic, but Verizon or AT&T offering some millimeter wave sites are straight up just running fiber, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm actually with you, Dennis. I think fixed wireless may actually be a better solution for a lot of people than Starlink, but I am really happy to see it as an option. And I think it's kind of creating this healthy competition in the market space for these people living in more rural and more remote locations that previously didn't have options. Now you're starting to get uh, companies uh, trying to get the dollar and T-Mobile's plan at 50 bucks a month. Like in my mind, it's a no brainer to go with T-Mobile over Starlink, at least in my market where I'm getting, I'd be getting very similar performance on both and T-Mobile's half the price with no upfront equipment charges. Yeah, it, can we, I just want to highlight a comment from Zachary here real quick because he's he's hitting the nail right on the head. Um, you know, he brings up Viasat and HughesNet, which have terrible reputations for being slow and expensive, right? This Viasat, Starlink can be Viasat and HughesNet very easily. Like, that's the that's the thing with satellite. Like, yes, it's closer. Yes, it has lots of capacity and it's going to have more capacity as the, the, the orbital system gets fleshed out in the next 10 or so years. But like, right now it would be very easy to saturate and i still even though it's leaving quote unquote beta i don't think it's actually out of beta and one other thing that's really important to talk about is that people don't realize because they think outer space is like this infinite thing but there's only so much space in the in this little goldilocks zone so to speak where starlink wants to put their satellites right sure and also something worth mentioning that no one talks about although there's been countless reports talking about it if you get into the whole scientific side of things is it only takes one accident to make it so that Starlink can never launch another satellite up in the air again. I.e., if one little fragment of debris, one little satellite doesn't get properly disposed and it breaks, yeah, and it just goes around and shatters the other things, you're gonna have space junk that's gonna prevent you from putting any other satellites in that orbit. So, like, 
I actually have very major concerns about how limited regulated like Starlink is. When well, it comes they, they are following all the regulatory requirements right now. Like they've designed the satellites to burn up in the atmosphere and decommission them. And they're being safe when they're deploying them. I mean, I almost feel like with the test satellite missile that was just launched by Russia, like that's almost a bigger problem, I feel like, than the satellites that are in low Earth orbit trying to provide Internet access to people around the world. Also, Zachary is touching on another point. Other companies want to do it. Like, I'm not what I'm getting at here is I don't really want private companies to be the ones controlling these launches. I would rather it be NASA one point than having various private companies because it leaves more room to go wrong. Like, also sure. worth mentioning that, yes, they're following current regulations, but laws are slow to catch up with modern day needs. We have the oldest Congress, I think, out of most governments trying to make laws to regulate something this important. And as much as I, I know this is going to sound really odd coming from Dennis, who's always tech enthusiast forward, but I almost want to see Starlink kind of slow their brakes a little bit, especially because I feel like there are other enhancements that need to be considered with these satellites that are lighting up into the air because it's an expensive endeavor anyway for the long term future of what Starling wants to be able to do, i.e. if that means making more efficient use of some weird technology, like say having those satellites talk to each other in the air, which I know was something that was talked about to limit the amount of base stations that need to put down on the earth. Yeah, they're working on that there. I think there's a new uh, version of the satellites that are being developed and will be deployed soon with lasers to get faster communications. And it's actually faster to communicate in the vacuum of space, even over greater distances than through the, wiring under the ocean right that's the I, I know that was in tech and development right what i'm saying is is like instead of launching more of these older satellites in the air that are going to have to just be decon and wasted anyway and become junk on the earth wait develop this more optimized tech that might be able to last a little bit longer um is what i'm getting at and also sure. put more testing into fail saves if for some reason say like the rockets that are meant to shoot it out of orbit down into earth fail What's the fail safe in that scenario, right? Have countermeasures that aren't being accounted for because it just takes one mistake, like I said, to ruin everything for satellites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Zach, I think brings up another good point. Like Starlink is being run basically by SpaceX. Like SpaceX is providing the service of putting the satellites into space. And so, yeah, they're, they're definitely being really careful. And I know I feel a lot of people involved with space and SpaceX and NASA are all extremely mindful of the very point you just made. So I think they're trying to I, take into consideration all the precautions necessary to, to make this a safe endeavor. I guess long story short, and this comes down to some of my leanings, but I just have a, a distrust natively of private companies in general. <laughs> okay. So my my scope of things i'm not saying the u.s government is the god's given answer to everything but like i just have a mistrust of private companies to somehow try to opt optimize something from a cost standpoint that inherently like removes the security functionality because it's not that uncommon for stuff like that to happen right yeah but sure. let's get off that let's stick on the good news good starlink they're out of beta awesome interesting design hope it gets into more people's hands hope cost comes down as we talked about yeah um it is definitely expensive.